Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to have a go at installing Windows 2000 on a 486 computer. We've got a BioStar PCI motherboard, Serious Logic PCI video card, 64 megabytes of RAM. We've got a AMD 5x86 running at 133 megahertz and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. For storage, we're using a SanDisk 16 gigabyte SD card with an SD2 ID adapter. We've got the GoTek floppy emulator and a standard ID optical drive. And here we have the BIOS post screen. This is our motherboard, the AM5X86 running at 133 megahertz and 64 megabytes of RAM. Right at the beginning, we've got a couple of issues. The first one is this machine cannot boot from the optical drive. And the other issue is it's got a 8 gigabyte hard drive capacity limit. So it can't address the entire 16 gigabytes. So to get around this, we're going to use the OnTrack Disk Manager. This will firstly allow us to use the entire 16 gigabytes of the SD card on this machine. But it also has a nifty feature built in that lets us boot from the optical drive. Here we can see the logo from OnTrack and by pressing C, we can boot from the optical drive. I've put in the Windows 2000 CD, so yep, off it goes. So that's looking pretty promising. Let's try to uh, install it and we see how we go. So this looks very promising. Let's press enter to continue. It's examining the hard drive. We can agree to the license, of course. There we go, there's our petition. Beautiful, we're just gonna press enter. Okay, so we have a few options here. I'm just gonna leave the file system as is. So this is looking very good. It's copying files off the CD. The progress bar is moving, so very promising at this stage. Okay, so around nine minutes have passed of the installation and it's gonna attempt the first reboot. I'm gonna leave the disk in the optical drive because it can't boot from it anyway, but fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Alrighty, here we go. So we can see the on-track screen and yes, it's loading um, Windows. So that's looking promising. We've got the Windows 2000 uh, boot uh, screen here and it's starting up. So yes, that looks very good so far. So I guess what comes next, probably entering the license key, username, all that stuff. So yeah, we'll be back soon with some more uh, updates. Alrighty, here we are with the setup wizard. Let's press next, installing devices. Off we go. Unfortunately, I forgot to plug in a mouse, so I just have to uh, make do with the keyboard. And we're gonna type in the license key. And we're gonna give it a name, it's an AMD 5x86. And time zone is perf, and the date and time, that's all good, so off we go. So the setup is telling us it's performing the final tasks, which is awesome, so we are almost there. I also found a PS2 mouse, which we're gonna use very shortly. So there you go, the installation is completed. We're just gonna press enter and the machine will reboot. Okay, so Windows 2000 is starting up. I've also plugged in a PS2 mouse, so it should be easier to navigate around. There you go, so it just picked up the PS2 mouse. Okay, we need another reboot, so let's just go ahead with that. Okay, here we go. That's all looking pretty well. Let's have a look what resolution we're running. Settings. Okay, let's reduce it a little bit to 800 by 600. True color. There you go. Much easier for us to see what's going on. Alrighty. Well, let's have a look at the system properties. X86. It doesn't tell us how much speed we've got um, or how much RAM. So I might install some software and we're going to have a cl closer look. Um, we can have a look into, in the device manager. Maybe we can see. Alrighty. So standard PC. There's our SD card, the Cirrus Logic video card, our optical drive, we've got the GoTek emulator, we have the ID controllers, keyboard, mouse, uh, plug and play monitor. I don't have any sound, I believe. Yeah, it's just codecs and system devices. 
Alrighty, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut that machine and I'm going to try using a 3D capable PCI video card to install some the video drivers and run some Quake 2 and just see how uh, fast this machine is. And I'm also going to run some hardware identification software so we can have a closer look at all these specifications. So we've upgraded the video card. We're using a GeForce 4 MX 4000. Uh, it's one of the faster PCI video cards I have, which actually works on the 486. Some of the newer ones don't work. Okay, that worked fine. So we have the latest uh, NVIDIA driver. We've got the Coolbits registry tweak, so we can turn off VSync, Everest Home Edition, two games with some benchmarks and also 3D Mark 2000. So I'm going to install the drivers first. So here it's unpacking the driver files and it's a 486, so it takes a lot longer than what I used to on my other machines. So it looks like the drivers actually did not install properly. Um, we've got no options here and there's also no NVIDIA control panel. Um, I'm just going to try a different uh, video card from a different brand uh, from Trident and maybe we have some more luck with that. So this is the Trident Blade T16. So hopefully we've got a bit more luck with this video card. I haven't used this uh, a lot yet. Oh no, we're getting another error. Hopefully that's not too severe. Well, that's not looking too good. We're getting a blue screen to do with the video card. So I'll have to boot up in safe mode and uninstall all the drivers. Okay, we're back with the Cirrus Logic video card. I tried a few other graphics cards and uh, yeah, did not have much success. Lots of blue screens actually and the drivers just uh, wouldn't work. You couldn't even change the amount of colors. So here we are in Everest, we can see all these specifications, we can see we've got an AMD 5x86. It doesn't give us the clock speed it seems, it also shows the motherboard and that we have 64 megabytes of RAM and also our video card, which I must say worked really well. So Windows had the drivers built in, which is uh, fantastic and here we can see the compact flash adapter and our optical drive. So we didn't have too much luck getting games to working on this machine thanks to the 3D video cards just uh, not working properly. So Minesweeper is all we can do today. And that's really it for this video. So it took around one and a half to two hours to install everything on this machine. So uh, yeah, uh, is this usable? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting regardless. I just wanted to see if the 486 can do it and yeah guys let me know down below in the comments what do you think about this project and um, let me know if there's anything uh, else you want to see if it uh, if i find it interesting i might actually do a video about it and that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching and i shall see you soon with another one